Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called GMAT Hacks, and I encourage you to head over there after watching this video to check out some of my few hundred tips available for improving your GMAT score. What I want to talk to you about today is a specific mental math tip that's really important to learn to move through GMAT math questions faster. As you probably know, you're not allowed to have a calculator on the GMAT. Now, you don't need a calculator on the GMAT, but if you're used to having a calculator, if you do all your calculations on a computer, maybe in Excel, um, you're going to have to do some calculations that you don't have to do very much in your day-to-day -day life, and that requires some adjustments. That means when you're practicing, don't use a calculator. You certainly don't want to get it in the wrong sort of habits while you're preparing for the test. And as much as you can, practice doing math in your head. When you're tipping at a restaurant, when you're shopping a sale, thinking through what a 30% discount means, stuff like that, um, take a moment, even if it's slower at first, try to do the math in your head. It will pay off when you finally do take the GMAT. Now the specific tip I wanna to talk to you about today is a way of calculating percents. Um, on the GMAT, you're not gonna see really complicated percents like 37.11% or 16% of 11,492. So the numbers aren't going to be very complicated, but they are probably going to be complicated enough to re require a few steps on paper. And rather than doing traditional multiplication, which takes a long time, um, it gives you a ton of little steps that are easy to make mistakes on, I'm gonna show you a tip that works for a lot of percents. First of all, let's start with an easy one. 10%, doesn't get much easier than that. Let's say we wanna find 10% of $142. You probably don't need me to tell you that you just take the decimal point, $142, move it over one, 10% of 142 is 1420. Like I say, doesn't get any easier than that. The next step, also pretty easy, is 1%. You can probably figure out where to go from that too. If you were starting with 142, you just move the decimal point over one more. It's $1.42. Or if you're starting with a 10% number, you move it over one more, $1.42. 10%, 1% doesn't get any easier than that. Here's another easy one, 50%. You just take half. So in case of 142, you might have to think about it for a little bit, but 140, half of that is 70, two, half of that is one. So we're looking at 71. How about 5%? 5% is one tenth of twenty if one tenth of fifty percent. So we just move the decimal point over one. And we've got seven ten. Another way to get five percent, this is something that you might have come across before in your life thinking about tipping, if you tip fifteen percent at restaurants, is you take ten percent right here, find half of that. Half of fourteen twenty is seven ten. You might find that even easier than going from 142 over to 71. Now I spent a little more time than I had to in my head just walking through all those steps, but the point being 10%, 5%, 1%, very easy. Once you've been doing this, putting a little time into practicing the mental math, those three percents are very simple. Now, on the GMAT, you're not going to just see 10%, 5%, 1%, 1 but you are going to see percents that you can build up from 10%, 5%, and 1%. Take for instance, 16%. This is a little bit of a fake example that I generated just for this exercise, but I have seen 16% on GMAT questions and it's a great illustration. 16 is 10% plus 5% plus 1%. We know how to get 10, we know how to get 5, we know how to get 1. Now 16 is very straightforward because we're just adding up those 3% we had already, but think about any other number you want and how much easier it is to get that way. Think about 30%. If you need 30%, you say 10%, multiply it by 3. Think about 31%. Find 30% by multiplying the 10% by 3, then add one more percent. 25%. You can take 50, split it in half. You can double 10% and add 5%. Really, any number can be expressed in terms of tens, fives, and ones. I mean, that's what the US currency is built on. You have a dime, a nickel, and a penny, and you can still pay for something that costs 24 cents, or 37 cents, or 52 cents. So when the GMAT gives you these more complicated percents, then don't immediately go for the longhand multiplication. I mean, 142 times 0.64, or 0.73, or 
0.16 in this case. That takes a long time. I watch people make mistakes on those all the time that they aren't able to identify. It's much better to think through it in an intuitive way. That's the other benefit of mental math tactics like this. If you practice them, if you're always going to sales and thinking, okay, that's 20% off, $120, what does that give me? It might take you a few seconds, but if you're doing that all the time, it is going to become more natural and you're going to think more intuitively about numbers themselves. That's really what the GMAT is after. So not only will it save you time on these specific questions like the ones we're talking about, it will also make you better at just sensing what's going on with the numbers, seeing the relationships. And as I talk about in a lot of my articles over at gmathacks.com, it's all about the relationships. The GMAT wants to know how easily you th work with numbers. Not, it's not just a matter of calculations. So you can take these shortcuts to calculations and turn them into more abstract thinking without really doing any work. It's just a matter of doing a little practice at times when you might not otherwise be thinking about the GMAT. And ultimately, you'll become a more abstract thinker about numbers just because you're thinking about numbers more often. It's just a little practice, it's not painful, and it'll really pay off big time when you get your GMAT score. Thanks for watching.